In today's episode of EU4, I will play as this one province state, Hizen Kefa. In a hundred years, through territorial conquests, I aim to rebuild the Ayyubid Empire. To do this, I'll have to defeat both the Ottoman Empire and the Mamluk Sultanate. It will be like David fighting two Goliaths. If you enjoyed this episode, I'll record another one where I attempt this achievement that requires a half million army. Welcome imperialists, Lucas here. Hizen Kaifa is the last province of the once mighty Ayyubid Empire, founded by Saladin himself. Today, I'll play as the last member of his dynasty. A small tip, both his traits are random. The Ayyubid dynasty is quite an interesting form of government because the Levantine culture group gives me no penalties, almost as if I accept it. However, my main culture is the Iranian group. I have access to special actions that become stronger the more vassals I have, or bigger vassals. Though I don't plan to play for them, things might turn out as usual. Additionally, Hisin Kefa has received a special dedicated giant mission tree. I also have two missions where I can choose whether to ally with or destroy the Ottoman Empire and whether to pursue peaceful actions or conquest in Persia. I'll make these difficult decisions later. I accepted a few interesting titles and gave out very few privileges to social estates to minimize their influence and maximize the land I gained from conquest. I also revoked some land from the estates. The missions I can choose from will help me with claims and government decisions will enhance my diplomatic reputation. I hired a diplomacy advisor, which is a must-have. I then insulted the Timurid Empire, allowing me to form a royal marriage with the Ottoman Empire, although an alliance is still far off. The first war I plan to declare on December 12th is against Akkoyunlu, who often allies with the Ottomans early on. Yes, fun! Immediately, I recruited mercenaries with a siege bonus since I had no luck with military leaders. My initial problem was my economy and I plan to take many loans. For Unfortunately, I can take quite a lot. I sent merchants to transfer trade and allied with Ajam, hoping they don't collapse in the first two years. I quickly completed the mission to prepare for upcoming wars, giving me claims on all my neighbors' provinces. On December 12th, Akkuyunlu didn't have an alliance with the Ottomans. I'm really lucky here. Yes, I know that this is quite rare. I then sent one diplomat to improve relations with the Ottomans and another to declare war on white sheep after setting them as my rival first. Power projection will be useful. I didn't attack their capital first because it's a mountain capital and involves crossing a river. I'm hoping the white sheep's forces will advance on my capital. Unless, of course, they decide to attack me here. That's a three penalty for the white sheep. Well done, commander. Despite dealing heavy losses to white sheep, I had bad luck with dice rolls and couldn't destroy their army. I returned to my territory to recruit more troops, needing 9,000 to capture the fortress, minimum. Meanwhile, inflation was rising. When I saw white sheep's army growing stronger, I decided to break the siege of their capital and dismantle the fortress in my capital to provoke their attack, which initially failed. Splitting my forces in half finally provoked white sheep's army to attack under favorable, for me, conditions. After over two years of siege, I captured their capital and provoked their army again to enter my capital, defeating them in several battles, which is easier than dealing with rebels. The war ended in total victory and I immediately allied with the Ottoman Empire on pause. Feeling somewhat safer, I reclaimed 15% crown land but ended up with twice as many loans as I should due to the prolonged war. Now I had to find new opportunities and deal with a certain problem. First, I repaid all 1% loans and as many 4% loans as I could. I still had some left so I dismissed my advisor and took new 1% loans from the merchants. Did I make another mistake? My heir also had a strange accident and I granted several remaining privileges. I was blocked from further conquests for now. Dalkadir became a vassal of the Ottoman Empire and the black sheep were too strong for me, especially since my alliance with Ajam was ending. So I decided to complete this mission for political security. This led me to a mission that reduced Korean costs, so I temporarily reversed a decision to start Korean provinces again after accepting the mission. I saved 30 points. I also completed a mission to humiliate the Turkomen, which gave me a good advisor and many territorial claims. I faced a crucial choice about my future relations with the Ottoman Empire. The conquest path would give me reduced province costs and war costs for 20 years, plus later claims on all provinces in Thrace and Anatolia, but the cooperation path with the Ottomans was also appealing, offering increased favors and janissaries. They would be useful if we pursued the path of conquering the Mamluk Sultanate. Given my tough situation from the long first war, I chose cooperation with the Ottomans. Probably no one does this on YouTube since conquest is more interesting. I sent my second diplomat to gain favors in the empire. I had to use debased currency twice to repay most of my remaining loans and take new loans from the merchants. I ended with four 1% loans and was better off. I hired a cheaper military advisor, which forced me to disband my mercenary army. <coughs> I was probably not thinking clearly 
we should be in the positive once I annexed the conquered territories. I invited a scholar and chose between aggressive expansion and lower development costs. Shock damage was interesting since we already have 10%. I had to release the white sheep to save my alliance with the Ottomans. Their attitude towards me changed to demanding, risking our alliance. The war between the black sheep and Georgia could be an opportunity. But I'll wait for Ottoman support. Even my alliance with the Ottomans might end soon. I'm actually making money. I used diplomatic points to develop my capital and increase my income, though it didn't help much. Just my luck, my allies were so in debt they couldn't help in their war. But the Ottomans eventually supported me against the black sheep, which I quickly took advantage of. The Ottomans will help suppress revolts. I got a great general, here from the emirs. I ignored enemy troops, letting the Ottoman army handle them. While I went for the black sheep's allies' capital, I got lucky and broke the walls early during the siege. The Ottomans were winning and losing battles. What? I adopted the military doctrine for faster conquest. After the Ottomans lost a battle, I stormed the fortress I was besieging to secure a quick peace. As a result, my armies got the black flag and were relatively safe. I quickly took the black sheep's vassal's fortress, providing a good defensive position. The Ottomans were making foolish decisions and losing battles. Unless I managed to provoke the black sheep forces without a commander to attack in the mountains with a minus three, then maybe I had some victories. Unfortunately, for further conquest here, it was crucial to capture this fortress, as it would give me access to the black sheep's allies. It fell after 200 days. As a Muslim country, I had events to reduce corruption. I eagerly used this. I made white peace with Mazandaran since I couldn't take their capital. I had to make a loop. I advanced to military technology level 5, allowing more modern Islamic units. The Ottoman army was weakened to match the black sheep's strength. The Ottomans left my war, but they had already decimated the black sheep's forces. To win the war, I increased my army to 12,000 to take the black sheep's capital. The enemy couldn't defend their capital anymore. I had no choice but to cut off Iraq's territories from Ajam and Timur to claim them later and took a lot of money from the black sheep. The war was very bloody. Now I could designate new rivals internationally. Surprisingly, I could ally with Timur. It was risky since Timur was still an Ottoman rival. Did I mark this province as my vassal by accident? Somehow I succeeded. After the war, I repaid all my loans and wasn't earning much, but I would fix that later. I chose an alliance with Timur. If I had to break the Ottoman alliance, I'd sacrifice the Timur alliance. Meanwhile, regarding the Ottoman Empire, I was increasing the level of trust between our two countries. The Ottomans called me to war against Genoa. I ordered my vassals to attack, hoping they'd become more loyal. If I was lucky, the Ottomans would suppress all my revolts. Even though I could create trade companies in Iraq, I preferred national provinces. I had to manage diplomats, improving relations with allies and vassals to max loyalty. In the meantime, I was introducing Renaissance institutions in Mardin because I had a bonus for lower development costs there. Generally, Mosul would have been a better province due to its cloth production. Unfortunately, I had some minor issues with the final implementation of the Renaissance, but they were temporary. I really like it when the Ottoman Empire is pleased with my participation in the war, even though my troops didn't take part. Only my vassals did. My relations with the Ottoman Empire are secured until the end of the game, but they still demand my provinces, which is strange. Out of curiosity, I checked who supports the independence of Transoxiana and other Timurid vassals, so I decided to dissolve this alliance. I also focused my court on administrative activities. Sure, Ottoman Empire, I will always help you. Thanks to the Ottoman Empire calling me to this war, we have solidified a very good alliance. Shortly after, the Timurid Empire entered a war they likely won't survive. As the first development from this era, I was torn between a bonus for fighting on the capital territory, which might be useful or less aggressive expansion. I chose aggressive expansion initially. I also completed the mission on the last bastion of Heisen Kefa. It's a bit late, I missed it, but it turned out well because I recovered some manpower. The Ottoman Empire tricked me a bit by giving me under-equipped Janissary regiments. With such good relations with the Ottoman Empire, I focused on securing relations with my vassals and catching up on technology, which was a big problem for me. I took 5 more 1% loans to introduce the Renaissance. Now I just need to find someone to sell this institution to. There are quite a few countries. When I helped the Ottoman Empire in a war again, I was able to maximize our relations. However, a significant problem now was the high autonomy in most of my conquered provinces, but I couldn't do much about it. In 1971 I noticed the Mamluk Sultanate was two military technologies behind me, had no manpower and their armies were not numerous. Not that I was in a much better situation. As Spain 
paying for the army and the Janissaries was a major expense. The Ottoman Empire was fighting another war, so I had to postpone the war with the Mamluks. I used the free time to complete a mission that unfortunately strengthened the ulema in my country, which was very unfortunate. Now I needed to build five temples, which could be a problem. The mission shifted me towards legalism instead of mysticism. So I incurred some corruption debt, developed technology with a discount, and then reduced corruption. I also formed an alliance with Ethiopia, which might be useful during the war with the Mamluks. As the truce with Karakoyunlu was ending, I started building a spy network there. For the first idea of his and Kaifa, I chose quantity. I hadn't played under it for a long time. I did it because it has the biggest modifier to increase the army limit just before the war with the black sheep. I managed to make a bureaucratic reform which increased taxes by 50%. This significantly boosted our income, almost reaching 10 gold. Speaking of strange things in my campaigns, you now have a Czech emperor. In October 1475, I could finally go to war with the black sheep over Baghdad, with the Ottoman Empire's help. This time, the well-commanded Ottoman armies might be useful. In this war, the Ottoman armies were indeed useful, as they destroyed the entire black sheep army. This time, I gained all of Iraq and a lot of gold, of which only half went to me. Mahisin Kaifa grew from one province to 23 in less than 30 years, securing Mesopotamia. It should have been done sooner to get a 20% development cost reduction for Baghdad, a very good province, giving me more territorial claims. Unfortunately, not against Ajam, so I had to make my own claims. There was an opportunity since many of the Mamluks allies wouldn't answer their call, so I used the Ottoman Empire to attack Halab. An additional bonus was that at this moment, the Mamluk armies are likely nowhere to be found. Just a moment ago, they were at war with Ajuran. I invited Ethiopia to this war, hoping its forts would be useful. I quickly broke the Syrian defense, though the Turks took two provinces. The war went easier than expected, conquering several areas from the Mamluk Sultanate. Importantly, I didn't make Syria my vassal, as the Ottoman Empire wasn't interested in these territories. If Syria were a vassal, the Ottoman Empire would make claims, worsening our relations. When these are my provinces, the claims will be withdrawn. After these conquests, I became large enough to be a kingdom and one of the largest states in the world at that moment. When did I conquer these provinces? Interesting, it seems the Ottoman Empire transferred them to me during our war with Imereti. With three diplomats, I could always have one carrying favors with the Turks. After these conquests, I could grant more tax privileges. Using my territorial claims with the Ottoman Empire's help, I attacked Ajam, where I could build cannons, but I couldn't afford them. Unless... I often used the Ottoman Empire to quell my rebellions. From Ajam, I conquered many provinces and immediately attacked a country whose independence was guaranteed. Where is Tabriz? It didn't bother me. Because of the war with Ajam, I couldn't immediately integrate newly conquered provinces. I also had to be cautious about aggressive expansion, improving relations with all countries in the Persian region. I started building my first building, Barracks, in 1488. I was a bit bothered by the region's layout. It was an eyesore. Reducing autonomy improved my income significantly, allowing me to afford better advisors who'll be really busy. It would be helpful to declare another war so Osman could come and help me suppress the next rebellions. I captured Basra and now get 10 gold for each trade building, but I don't have any. Wait, I conquered one! As the truce with the Mamluk Sultanate was ending, I completed a mission to oppose the Mamluks. I began integrating Gilan. Unfortunately, during this process, the Ottoman Empire called me to another war with Genoa, so I attacked Georgia to make it a march. Unfortunately, my truce with the Mamluk Sultanate ended, so I had no choice but to attack Damascus. This war didn't go well initially, but I managed to turn the tide. I just had to wait for the Ottoman Mamluk war to end. For the next ideas, I chose administrative ones, though trade ideas were tempting. Not much land conquered, but a lot of money gained. In 1503, the Golden Ayyubid era began. With these recent conquests, I could finally complete the mission to restore the Ayyubid Empire. Though it's better to wait a bit before the next war with Egypt, I wanted a moment of peace. But unfortunately, the Ottoman Empire invited me to war, not with the Sultanate, but with Cyprus. So, it might be a good time to restore the Ayyubid dynasty, the Ayyubid restoration. The Ayyubid Empire once stretched far and wide and stood as the Lion of Islam and the custodian of the holiest cities. Saladin's successors, unable to honor his legacy, have weakened the Sultanate and the unfortunate unfortunate turn of events led to its collapse. We have been stagnating ever since. However, our recent campaigns of conquest prove that the eagle's wings have not been broken yet. With our hearts set on restoring the glory of our ancestors, we march forward, for we are the bloodline of Saladin, and his legacy is ours to reclaim. The eagle takes flight once again. Basically, we've changed the country's name, the ideas remain the same as before. We could change the coat of arms, but unfortunately not. Now it's time to deal with the Mamluk Sultanate, because it seems I won't be able to deal with the Crusaders. I'll definitely 
reclaim the holy cities. What's most important to me in this region is preventing the Ottoman Empire from gaining any more coastal territories, because they already have one, unfortunately, and fortunately I prevented them from taking more. It's also time to move the capital to Damascus. Meanwhile, here's how Europe looks. When I started annexing Bitlis, I initiated more wars in Persia. I also noticed an opportunity with Khorasan, which will make a good vassal, as it has many territorial claims to Timur. This will prevent aggressive expansion. Meanwhile, the Ottoman Empire tricked me into a war with Poland. As my armies advanced toward Horde, my border improved after several minor wars, at least for now. I also managed to vassalize Khorasan. Unfortunately, there was an accident with the newborn heir. I introduced colonialism in Damascus. Taking advantage of the Ottoman Empire's war with Poland, I attacked Transoxiana. Fars will also be targeted. Unfortunately, the Ottoman Empire installed their dynasty on our throne. I'll have to deal with that. I also took a province in uh, Adana. I didn't want to conquer more provinces, as I'm already on the edge of the Ottoman Empire's loyalty. I forgot that their rulers are often militaristic, they'll always demand neighboring provinces. I could start building a fleet now, focusing solely on trade. With the Ottoman Empire's help, I conquered Shervan. My next goal was attacking Transoxiana again, as this time they weren't allied with the Ottoman Empire. During this war, it was annoying that Transoxiana's armies were small and kept evading me. After reclaiming territory from Transoxiana, it was time to invade Hormuz. I aim to capture key provinces around Basra and Hormuz. Controlling Hormuz will facilitate trade theft from India. Meanwhile, I noticed the Ottoman Empire attacked the Mamluks. This will likely end my alliance with the Turks. The Ottoman Empire will be a tough opponent given their chosen ideas. Regarding my policy in the Persian region, I'd prefer a diplomatic approach. I'm curious about the vizier's actions, but I won't meet the conditions for the next mission to have a loyal ally in the region, so I'll shift my focus to conquest. Unfortunately, the Ottoman Empire conquered vital provinces for me. The Alexandria trade. In the meantime, I managed to reach Hormuz's capital, sacrificing my fleet. In the end, I acquired a bunch of good provinces for my kingdom at a bargain, for a steal, because as you can see, I have a lot of modifiers affecting annexation costs. And honestly, I don't even know where they all came from. After Hormuz, it's time for the Sultanate. I'm torn whether to cut off the Egyptian provinces from the Ottoman Empire or conquer more in Arabia. But Arabia is mostly desert and more desert. Ultimately, I conquered Cairo and surrounding areas, isolating the Mamluks from the Ottoman Empire, which will likely end my alliance with the Ottomans in the future. As I have long periods of peace with all countries, I'm expanding my trade points now. I'm also implementing trade edicts, which I forgot earlier. I should have done this at the start of the religious era, but I did change the third bureaucratic reform to decentralization. I continue to reclaim territories for Khorasan. Soon I'll annex the country, which will be costly, so I may wait to finish developing diplomatic ideas first. I'm surprised by how effectively Bohemia is reforming the Holy Roman Empire. The bot emperor seems to be the best, especially when they convert their capital to the one true faith. Now, my diplomacy seeks new allies. As my alliance with the Turks ended, I continue reclaiming Khorasan's territories. Unfortunately, I need to conquer distant capitals. Kazan paid a hefty tribute for peace. So did Jonpur. Is this a new monument? I don't remember it being here before, but it's really good. I've also strengthened my army and met other requirements to restore Saladin's legacy. The tales of Saladin's military genius echo through the ages. His tactical prowess on the battlefield and his diplomatic acumen during the Third Crusade have left an indelible mark on the world. As the Sultan of Egypt and Syria, Saladin established the Ayyubid dynasty and led it to great victories, including the recapture of Al-Quds from the hands of the Crusaders, ending nearly nine decades of occupation by the Franks. Now, I face the tough choice of which legacy to pursue, or not. But this seems the strongest option, granting our generals plus two shock pips. Imagine Polish generals with eight pips in shock, the maximum is six, so I waited to choose the fifth military doctrine to restore Saladin's legacy, and I achieved all this in less than a hundred years, starting with just one province. Now I have 111, my income is pathetic, but I ignored economy matters. If there's a second episode, I'll fix that. I also subdued Fezan to improve the map's appearance. Farce, I completed the mission to showcase Baghdad as a gem in our crown, and to rebuild the Great Library in Baghdad. But my ruler is old, so I'll wait to fulfill this mission. The borders look much better now. I've also become a true empire, allowing me to accept many cultures, which is beneficial for stability, economy, and army recruitment. I allied with with powerful Bohemia, which began decentralization. I won't show you that. I won't show you that. 
the Holy Roman Empire's decentralization. In Damascus, I built Saladin's mausoleum. I think it's worth it for splendor and so on. I have a huge mosque now. For now, building manufactories is crucial and securing funds for their expansion after maximizing diplomatic ideas and uh, realizing I get a production bonus here. I regret not choosing additional religious and trade ideas at the start. I could have had an even bigger bonus. Luckily, Yemen released several new Arabian states besides conquering many Mamluk provinces. I'll have to assert some claims. What will happen after conquering Egypt? Egypt, once the heartland of our empire, has for centuries been controlled by the Mamluks who had once been our most loyal soldiers, then turning into traitors who caused the downfall of our sultanate. As we have managed to reclaim much of our rightful lands, we now face the difficult question. How shall we address the Mamluks? We can seek reconciliation or no longer trust them. Honestly, I'll seek a reconciliation, as I'm curious about their unique units, and I forgot that Mamluks get special infantry. Honestly, that bonus will be great for cavalry. Consider where the cavalry stands in terms of pips. Several minor wars later, these countries aren't enjoying freedom. But our influence has grown significantly after their conquest. Let me know in the comments. In this episode, I spread the Habsburg dynasty across all European thrones, except for the theocracy in the middle, of course, thanks to a new mechanic, as you'll learn in that episode.